Young and old are a special image of each other, mirror reversals. When we read stories even far removed in time or place of very young people being hurt, mistreated, bullied, or tormented, we react with a depth as if it were happening very close to some of us in the here and now. Similarly, when we hear of very old people taken into extreme circumstances, being guilefully intimidated, exploited, driven to lonely anguish, fear, and worse, we react with visceral disgust. There is something special innocence on the one hand and the chill nearness of mortality on the other about both stages of life. And there is this bond that unites them. In their different ways, none are more vulnerable. The infant unable to sleep or be without a mother's help, the isolated older person shed of all her loved ones sustaining the life that remains with the memories of the life that is already gone. Both enjoy an almost visible state of pure being. And so when the story was aired yesterday of a 94-year-old woman who conned into surrendering her house, her savings, many were intensely outraged. Two people stand accused of this low, low deed of mocking, being cruel, and manipulating a defenseless, isolated, old woman. Her own statements say it, I didn't really feel at home. It was her home according to the charges, these two and their family had lock, stock and barrel moved into and taken over. The only place I felt at home was in my own bedroom, because that was the only room in the house that they left her. And of course, they got to the money. These types always do. What some old woman's whole lifetime lifeline savings to pure scavengers. Stealing from a lonely, defenseless old lady and holding her virtually imprisoned within her own bedroom walls. If nothing else, this is as cowardly as the world will allow cowards to be. More gutless than this, you'd have to be purged in a vacuum and tethered to a retreating jellyfish. Norma Marshall, on the other hand, yesterday, for all her age and the need of a walker and months and years of implicit terror behind her, she, she looked classy and dignified and proud. Looking at her and listening to her, people wondered who would take advantage and scheme against such a person. Those pharmacists who helped her are getting the praise they deserved. Meantime, there has been a great outrush of public help to help Marshall, whom the scam stripped of her life savings. That's the kindness of strangers again. That other side of humanity showing itself that somehow takes a piece of the edge off this otherwise detestable story. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.